Welcome to Happy Homes and Gardens. I'm your host. My name is Daphne Royce. I am a real estate broker, architecture, and interior designer. Patrick Kelpatrick has an impressive career in Hollywood. He has appeared in over 180 films and TV series, has won seven awards and one nomination. Patrick is an actor, director, screenwriter, producer, teacher, and international entertainment speaker. He has two films that will be released in February 2024. Let's welcome Patrick and let him share some insights with us. Hey. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you, Daphne. It's great to be here, particularly since we're launching a Kickstarter campaign for a film I'm directing, producing, starring in. And uh, I wrote with my wife and a, a great team called Dying for Living. And so uh, it's a great time to appear on podcasts and, of course, to promote whatever's going on with you. And you mentioned Nessie. Uh, coming out, which I'm very proud of. It's an authentic, uh, sort of very charming family movie, which is not my usual thing, doing action films. Can you tell us a little bit about you and how did you get into entertainment business? Um, I was a journalist uh, and an advertising writer for magazines in New York. Uh, just about everyone and a lot of ad agencies. And then I took a break from that to write a novel. And I ended up sharing a house with a, a big time actor who was becoming an even bigger time Broadway director, a guy named John Tillinger. And I wrote a play instead of a novel, was asked to join theater companies. And uh, it just took off from there, kept screenwriting and that's basically it. And now we're writing, directing, and producing, and starring in things, uh, along with others, great collaborators here at Uncommon Dialogue Films. Dying for Living is uh, a work in progress, and we're just launching our Kickstarter campaign on February 13th. Uh, it's got a great cast, Costas Mandalore, Nina Bergman, uh, Tatiana Neva, Ivana Wynn, the great beauties, great badasses. Uh, Costas for many films, uh, Olivia Gruner, many films, uh, action films, great French martial arts sensation, Egan Machado, uh, eight-time world jiu-jitsu champion, uh, Chuck the Iceman Liddell, who uh, is two-time uh, light heavyweight champion of the world for the UFC, knocked out Randy Couture twice to take the championship and now has a vivid uh, acting career and uh, extraordinary fights. Uh, martial arts are all done by legendary martial arts choreographer and director himself, Art Camacho. And the cinematography is done by the brilliant uh, Stefan Coulson. I, you know, I, whenever I'm with Stefan and all these other people, I realize, hey, you might not be the smartest brain in the world. <laughs> these guys are genius. There's five guys who can direct this film on the film. Raffaello, my producing partner, being another one. So the Wall Twins. Oh, the charming Wall Twins. They're incredible. 14-year-old uh, twins. They're extraordinary actresses and uh, wonderful acrobatic action performers. So uh, uh, what else can I say about the Kickstarter? We've got a lot of great perks. Uh, people who back the film can actually um, participate and be filmed in a scene. They can come to the glamorous VIP premiere with their friends. They can get extraordinary wardrobe uh, items. I'm wearing my wardrobe from the film, one of them, and I have about 15 of these uh, uh, done by the designer James Andrew. Um, the film is about a vain aging hitman who, in a desperate attempt at redemption, uh, resurrects the family he abandoned long ago in Hollywood and the heart of Holland. And they're all professional hit people and mayhem ensues. Uh, the line between love and betrayal is blurred and bullets fly and loyalties are shattered. And it's a, uh, our contribution to the world of action cinema. 
And uh, I'd love to have everybody in your audience be our backers and they'll get a lot of great perks and they'll be part of an extraordinary action film. I'm sure my audience will love that. It sounds like a big crew. How many members do you have in the Kid Star? Oh, you know, it's a great question. Uh, we have about 35 cast and crew when we finished shooting in a brilliant factory in Chino. Uh, and uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a great tight crew. I mean, literally, these people uh, are so good at their job. Behind the scenes, there's my wife, Heidi Bright, co-producing uh, the film. Actually, I think she's elevated to a full producer now. She's the executive vice president of Uncommon Dialogue Films. And then there's uh, co-producer uh, Maria Semaloiva, uh, who works with me every day and uh, throughout the film. Uh, Jacob Bressler, line producer, he could also direct the film. He's directed hundreds, uh, and directed or assistant directed or line produced hundreds of films. So it's a really extraordinary team and I'm filled with gratitude whenever I think about them. And, uh, God, you learn a lot about yourself, writing, directing, producing, and starring in a movie. Where was the film take place at? In Chino. Where everything is in Chino, although we have a mansion in LA, which uh, doubles for something else out in Chino. Okay. Uh, so we have a couple of locations around LA. French bakery, some other great, great environments. And how long it takes you to film this film? We filmed two weeks. The teaser that I hope you'll air on your uh, show is okay. the result of our first two weeks of filming. We have <clears throat> two more weeks to film. One a week of that is uh, pickups uh, in case we need it. But really, we have about nine more days of principal photography, and then on into a post-production. Impressive. And you have been both in front and behind the screen. Which one do you enjoy more and why? You know, it's a great question. Uh, acting is such a lark and it's so fun just doing that. Um, I love writing with my wife and she's now a full collaborator on almost every script that we do. Uh, <clears throat> I try, Daphne, and I really try to come from gratitude with it. wherever I am I'm in the universe. Um, uh, whether it's doing my own stunts and dying for a living or whether it's writing the script or producing. I do a lot of film finance stuff, as you can imagine. I do a lot of consulting for others, collaboration on their films. So that's a joy as well. And all of those people are really rich, rich resource for making our projects better. I'm sure you work all the time. It sounds like it. And can you yeah, share what your day is problem. like? <laughs> I know, it's a problem. Just like you, I'm busy a lot. I recently got hypnotized and uh, discovered one of the reasons that I've created this world where there's work everywhere. And, but uh, I love it. I do, you know, there's a great economic sanctuary to that, an emotional sanctuary too, because you're not at prey to any shift or whatever that's going on in the world. Not that you're isolated, that's tr not true. We're all uh, subject to being influenced by outside events, but uh, I'm very, very grateful that the world pushed me into not just acting, not just writing, not just producing, not just directing, uh, not just teaching too. We do a lot of mentoring of young act actors and writers and directors and producers over the years. Uh, I'm doing less of that right now because the producing and the directing and writing is, is so uh, encompassing and the film finance is so encompassing. I want to give a shout out to the fact that I'm going to the Chandler Film Festival this weekend. Um, oh, wow. What a great group of people. In eight years, they've become a major film destination and I'm really, they invited me out there for a workshop and uh, <clears throat> a film finance workshop and an acting workshop. And so uh, Mattel uh, Matish is the director out there. Great, great guy. Uh, they're going to have a gala this weekend, which I'm really looking forward to. 
You look great. I saw a picture you have to the galas. You look great. Well, I love compliments. You, we talked about that before. Um, yes. You know uh, how, um, but you know if they're if they're heartfelt and authentic, I like them. You know, even if they're not. You know, the thing about writing and directing and acting and producing and all this other stuff, you begin to really love all the life forms that take place on the planet. Uh, because, you know, when I wrote my memoir, the first volume, and I hope well, I'm going to get a chance to polish the second volume, which is all show business all the time. But it talks about each job, really, uh, largely uh, of the over 200. By the way, correction, it's not 180. It's 200 uh, now. We know this because of IMDb Pro. I think you probably looked at Wikipedia. Those guys are slow over there. You do extra films and they don't uh, adjust very easily. You got to submit the stuff and everything. But uh, the point of it is when I was writing about all of these people, and there's a lot of crazy people in Hollywood, global Hollywood, there's a lot of crazy people in the world. But other than people who do overt violence to people and that kind of thing, you really begin to love the uh, diversity of the human species um, and the animal kingdom, of course, but, uh, well, yeah, I, even the crazies I love. They make it interesting. Can you share what your day normally like? I have my rituals. I get up. Uh, I do a lot of physical stretching. I do a lot of swimming. I jump into a cold pool when I can. I had a wisdom tooth extracted last week, so I haven't done that the last couple of days. Uh, the routine has involved the gym at the end of the day. Uh, and in any given day, I'm doing a lot of uh, calls, a lot of writing, a lot of film financing stuff, a lot of sending out of communications. Uh, and, and a good day results in some period, usually after two o'clock, that I'm working, writing with my wife. Sometimes I can't sleep, so I'll get up in the middle of the night and I push forward with the scripts on my own uh, and make lists of things that have to be accomplished. Grandchildren, children, I've got uh, four sons, essentially, and five grandchildren, and two uh, daughters-in-law who are married to two of the involved with, married or involved with the two, two of the sons. That and takes up uh, some wonder. That's real vacation. So you're talking real vacation when you get to play with your grandkids. So I don't get to do that enough. You're very lucky that you enjoy your life. You know, I really am really making every effort to do that every moment that I've got, because sometimes we put ambition or sometimes we put accomplishing all of the list of things. And it's really a choice. Even if you've got a lot of things to accomplish, you mean, if you've got a lot of things to do to, to abdicate the joy of it, what a terrible thing, because then what happens? Bitterness gets, conflict starts arising. You don't want it. I don't want it. I, I you know, that's why I do the physical stuff, the massage sometimes, uh, uh, less chiropractory than I used to do when I was doing so many stunts with my own acting work. Um, uh, you know, time with my wife, having a great meal with my wife. We could see a lot of films. Uh, whether watched at home or there's a great thing called American Cinematique that we uh, joined and they show wonderful films at the Arrow Theater, the Egyptian and the Los Feliz Theater, which are two smaller theaters here. Uh, premieres, I love events uh, that we go to. Um, you know, it's, it's a balance. I, yeah, I have a lovely life. And I'm going uh, going to go to an outdoor trip with my one of my sons in or in uh, beginning of February. So some fresh air in Oregon. Uh, a lot of filming probably taking place there because we'll be doing product integration and Kickstarter videos uh, for Dying for Living. But uh, got to get nature somewhere in there. 
I have met two of your sons. You have a beautiful family. Thank you. You're very kind. Um, they're awesome. I'm very, you know, I'm so blessed. So many others have had challenging problems with their children or some of the things that people go through. And uh, I'm very blessed. Yeah, I'm very blessed. Uh, they're, they're, they're extraordinary gentlemen, the four sons. There's a, there's a, the greasy black belt jujitsu uh, recovery, uh, drug addiction recovery entrepreneur doing very well. Alex is the creative director for the LA Kings, a huge job. I think you met Alex, the long yes. black hair. Um, ben, you met, is involved in the hospitality business and has a young grandson, uh, AJ, uh, with his lady Alice. Uh, and then Sam, you haven't met, who's uh, another six foot five alien, uh, who's an architect in Denver. And he's, uh, by the way, he makes his uh, acting debut in uh, Dying for Living. And he does a, an incredible job, just thrown into the mix. I knew he was a, a natural actor. Uh, and it was a great joy to actually work with him and have him see closer what I do. And for him to immediately rise to the occasion, it'd be really great in the film. But it sounds like you have to watch a lot of movies and TVs. Do you have a favorite shows? You know, that's kind of like asking, do you have a favorite um, restaurant? I often cannot remember a lot of them, but we talk about them a lot. Uh, <clears throat> My tastes are pretty wide ranging. My wife and I try to watch everything we can and get our hands on. That's kind of impossible since the pr proliferation of content is incredible. You know, if I had to pick essential movies that have meant tremendous amount to me in my life, I'd say uh, Saving Private Ryan is always deeply moving, 300. The original Spartacus, as well as the TV show of Spartacus. Uh, there's so many essential movies. Uh, the comedies, Dinner for Eight, Dinner Dinner at Eight, uh, All About Eve. Uh, in new times, I'm just watching Society of Snow, which is great. Uh, uh, what else did we... I just watched a really light comedy with... Um, Vince Vaughn, who is a friend, and uh, I, I don't know the other name, is sort of a portly actor called Queen Pins. It's just a light piece of thing, but, you know, comedy is so important. I, the works of Will Ferrell and Adam McKay are just extraordinary stuff. Uh, there are a lot of actors that I admire. Did you go to the Golden Globes? I mean, did you watch the Golden Globes? This year? Yeah. I only watch partially. There is so much inspirational work. The I was so glad Emma Stone won for uh, Poor Things. Absolutely mm -hmm. extraordinary film. Uh, Life-changing, I would say. And I don't say that often. Um, just the every aspect of storytelling there. There's so much inspirational stuff at the upper reaches of it. Um, Poor Things. I'm so glad Mark Ruffalo, Ruffalo got a nomination for best supporting actor because he certainly deserves it and uh wasn't acknowledged at the globes um uh in the best actor category i think it was it's impossible to have a, a winner there's no such thing as a winner in that kind of a circle i do think emma stones was hands in another league her performance was in another league uh for poor things uh, uh, we look for a lot of younger actors because some of the other films that Uncommon Dialogue films have, uh, and they're all ex extraordinary films that uh, very much deserve to be seen. So a lot of them require younger people. And the, the challenge with that is the younger people often don't have the distribution power globally. Uh, so you have to somehow position them with some older distribution 
people who have that cash bringing financing power uh, or not. Sometimes you can not have any names, and, uh, but much more challenging to raise a significant budget that way. Uh, <clears throat> the money's got to come from somewhere. So, um, uh, so we watch things like Stranger Things and Sadie Sink and uh, Maya Hawk and Margaret Qualley. Uh, there's a lot of inspirational young actors out there. The girl, uh, her name eludes me right now from Ozarks. Incredible. Great show, by the way. Really great show. You know, there's a lot of great stuff. <laughs> uh, work to, for people to admire. That's why, why would you ever want to be involved in anything unless you were aiming at the highest thing? You mentioned so many great films. What are the important moving parts necessary to create a good movie? Well, I think the short answer is a team. Uh, if you don't have a good team, movies is not an effort that can uh, happen alone. Uh, there are people like Robert Rodriguez, I guess he builds the movie in his room and stuff like that. And what you can accomplish with that is incredible, but you still need actors and you need uh, people to perform. Uh, you need a, a great writing has to come from somewhere. Every aspect has to have vision. And if you're going to go to the top of the game, it has to have great writing, great sound design, great special effects. I just signed a, a, an arrangement with a, a, a man. I, I looked at his special effects reel and I was it was ungodly, Daphne. It was so good. I'd never seen anything so powerful. And he's doing great stuff with music as well. I mean, you can put in elements uh, and get things even out of, if you know how to manipulate the system of, of filmmaking, with people who aren't even actors, but that's because you're shooting skillfully and you're shooting, you're editing skillfully. Every aspect, every department is important. The wardrobe, uh, all of it is really, really important. The team, the team, the that's team. all it is. I mean, it's, al it's almost ridiculous saying somebody directed the film, you know, because it takes so many people to put it together. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost ridiculous to say somebody produced a film. There's a mastery to producing because you bring the elements together and you, uh, in television, you're often the writer as well. So uh, that takes mastery and that takes financial acumen and it takes people's skills. And then, you know, it, you can't, one person can't do it all, not even close. <laughs> Acting, on the other hand, is very sometimes can be a very solitary thing, although not really because you need to rehearse with live people or it's not going to work right. In my way of working. Okay. And as you know, I'm in Silicon Valley. What do you think the impact that entertainment industry will be facing from the streaming services and artificial intelligence going forward? Well, I don't think artificial intelligence is going to replace that spark of vision and spark of creativity. I do think it's an, a, an incredible tool and we're already using it. We just built for Nessie, the film uh, about the Loch Ness Monster directed by Robbie Moffat that we're distributing to theaters from my company and I star in it. Um, we we deployed we played with AI images for the film and we made them really work as posters because we applied our creative skill and our vision and our knowledge of the elements that have to go on there to the AI images. Somebody looks at these AI images to begin with and they go, well, this is absurd. This is not going to work. You know, but when that happens, I go, there's a way to work, make it work. There's a way. And, it, and, and, and even if you fail, you need to go down that road to find out what's down that road. 
So throughout the Christmas uh, holiday, we were working on the trailers and the posters for uh, Nessie uh, so that they would speak to an American audience and they would speak to a global audience. So a North American audience. So we use AI for not to crea create art, although it, it, we're creating art with those posters, but we use AI to analyze the viability of projects. And what it really does is validate your instincts in a lot of cases, or give you areas where you might take a look and see if you need to work on it. But again, nobody can take away that free independent choice that you have for going with your gut, as it were. Um, so uh, I find it an exciting development. I think if you're not using it on some level, as my wife said, you're gonna be a dinosaur sooner or later. <laughs> By the way, there's a lot of place for dinosaurs. So we'll see what happens. So for your feature work, do you have a, a certain place you like movies to be filmed or a story you like to be told? Oh, God. I first and foremost like Uncommon Dialogue, all of uh, Uncommon Dialogue films, slates to come to being, not just because of that, but because of development investors and the creative people, not because they're mine, but because development investors and people who have collaborated work long and hard on all every aspect of the production. Uh, and that's moving forward. We're assigning directors and cast and things like that, all of which are elements of the process of arriving for full funding. Things happen when they're supposed to be happening. But I, there's so many parts of the world I'd love to work in. Greece, for one, I'd love to go there. Uh, Costas uh, is a great, great friend. He speaks very highly of Greece. I'd love to go there. Um, I've shot in extraordinary places and I've shot in little dangerous places over in North Hollywood. It depends. What's important is what's up on the screen. Now you can go in a room and shoot the whole thing in something that looks like a flying saucer. Uh, we have a, a, a Western takes place in a unique period. Uh, I'm adamant that that actually is shot in Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico the places where the landscape becomes a dynamic character. Uh, I look forward to doing that. I love Colorado. It's a mythical place. So do I, uh, is Arizona and so is New Mexico. They're extraordinary places. Um, I've shot all over America and the world on a lot of places. There's Australia is a great place to shoot. New Zealand, Hawaii. They all have their own challenges, their own economic the viability, their own uh, charm. Uh, location can have such a great impact on a film. I'm excited to see your two new releases in February. And you mentioned that the release date is on February 13th. What type of films are they? February 13th is the launch for our Kickstarter campaign to raise the finishing funds with the two thirds completed Dying for Living. Uh, Nessie <clears throat> has come out at, in Scotland, done very well. We had took the worldwide rights uh, and they have a deal with a company called Random, which uh, handles streaming and home viewing. Uh, when they, Random releases it, I don't know. We had to finish the posters and the, the trailers, and I'll send you those uh, for your show. Um, okay. Before we uh, made our approaches to the theater chains, um, Black Creek, which I just uh, appeared in with mm -hmm. Cynthia Rothrock, great lady, a mixed martial arts uh, a Western, uh, their distribution and release schedule is completely up to them. I just was an actor in that one. So uh, Dying for Living, we're finishing up once we get those finishing funds. And I'm extremely grateful for the people 
on February 13th. They'll be reading about it in press releases and social media. If they will, please contribute and help us across the line of this really, really passion project of mine. Uh, we know we're doing really, really well because all the distributors are clamoring for the film. Uh, and so uh, that's, uh, we launched that February 13th. Uh, a perfect Valentine's Day gift. I'm looking forward to that. Right. Well, we'll have to come, have you come down and do your podcast from the set when we're filming. Okay. I would love to. I would love to. Happy to accommodate you. <laughs> I got to ask you one last question. Sure. What is the most difficult parts of your job be, of being an actor and a screenwriter? Uh, the most difficult part of the job is to be graceful in all circumstances and not be reactive and not be, um, I, I, I suppose, to grow up. <laughs> it's not a dictatorship. It's not a, it's a collaboration and it's important to listen to everybody and, uh, and, set aside any kind of arrogance or ego to, egotism or anything like that about, you know, life is too short, so. I think that applies to every job, right? Yes, yes absolutely. You know, I, after getting hypnotized, uh, it was hypnotherapy and I discovered some insights, even though with all the acting and the writing, uh, I'd done a fair amount of reflection about my own background and all of that and how I arrived to wherever I arrived but and I feel blessed at the same time I, I received incredible insights from it and one of the insights was that every person on the planet needs healing and that's something that probably all of us should take to heart you know that empathy for others is one thing that I strive for I've always been observing other people, and I think that's a great quality for a writer or an actor to observe other people because you may be playing them in a movie down the line <laughs> or utilizing uh, whatever makes them special. So, um, you know, it's a great thing to persuade others towards an activity, but you better be sure that what you're persuading them to is an extraordinary situation uh, grace under fire that's the best thing grace on the fire yes thank you patrick i really appreciate thank your time you, today that was You're a great awesome. interview thank you very much i look forward to seeing you down the line and we'll look forward to the interview and thank you for your support of our kickstarter campaign for dying for living launching february 13th thank you i'd so. love to help thank you so much <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you in the biz head. <laughs>